The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Hello and welcome to another World Cup edition of Soccer to the Max as two more quarterfinalists have been decided and they were decided on penalties but celebration time in Russia because Russia with the upset and our resident Russian is here trying to hold back the tears. Your resident Russian already cried today. Shout out to my friend Danny Beck who FaceTimed me after the game and who saw all of those tears. Vamos, Russia. Hey, I mean, listen, uh, I think a lot, there was very small chances people were thinking Russia would win. Obviously, they got what they wanted. You know, they didn't make any kind of uh, mincemeat about that's what they were aiming for was penalties. I can Feb said it himself. They got him, and he was the hero at the end of the day. Eric, I mean, Spain, maybe they need to figure out some other way to play than trying to pass the death because it doesn't seem to work. First announcement from the Russian Federation. We'd like to congratulate officials in making proper decision on penalty of their own volition. We have nothing to do with it. Yes, uh, that one. That <laughs> I mean, there was two of them, but the PK one. Uh, some people are apparently upset that that was not a penalty because he wasn't facing the ball. He didn't know about putting his arm up, whatever. Mm-hmm. Felt like a penalty to me. You don't need to have your arm up in that situation. You are no. protecting yourself. Yeah, you really don't. But as far as with the overarching plot of the match, we talked about this in our preview, and you're right. We said Spain was just going to try to pass, 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 pass strike. That strike never really came. And now... uh. Do they try to go for less possession in favor of maybe a better two up top? Something more free-flowing? Yeah. What is Spain going to do going forward? They're not back to their ways where they were in 2014, but this is certainly a performance reminiscent of their time pre-2010. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, for well, for one, Russia scored both the goals because... <laughs> Technically, one of them was an own goal. Own goal, still winning the golden boot, by the way. And... See, I thought Neymar was going to be the one scoring 10. I never thought it would be own goal with that number. <laughs> own goal is uh, getting quite a reputation so far in this in this World Cup. So is set pieces. It's, I think it's, uh, and penalties, 20 penalties scored, mm-hmm. which is a record for the World Cup. That's It's amazing how many non run of play goals have happened in this World Cup and another one thanks to Zuba on that penalty. So hey, it it keeps happening. But honestly, I mean Rachel just how do you feel Russia did on on this one? I mean, it wasn't their best showing. I know Stanislav Cherchsov said after the match, listen, it wasn't pretty. But at this point in the World Cup, it doesn't matter about pretty. It matters about winning and getting the job done. And heck, if you want to go to penalty kicks, then go to penalty kicks. Make me nervous and ruin my fingernails. That's fine. But it just, it wasn't their best showing. But I don't think Russia was bad either. I saw something that Spain had over a thousand passes completed 
and Russia only had like 250 something. Okay, that's fine. Play a more defensive match. But they also did well with getting into the attack because they did have some opportunities. I know Denis Cheryshev had some really good ones. Fader Smolov had a good strike. Um, Artem Zuba has been just the light at the end of the tunnel for Russia. And this isn't someone who is new to the scene. I mean, he's been playing since 2011, but he's only been scoring goals for the national team since 2014. And now he has three, excuse me, now he has three goals and is honestly on the hunt for that golden boot, unless Harry Kane has another hat trick. It wasn't their best showing, wasn't our best showing, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter about being pretty. Doesn't matter. What I really liked is that nobody was fancy with their penalty kicks. Half of them, David De Gea should have saved, but he didn't have a good tournament. I saw a graphic on Fox Sports that said he had faced seven shots the entire tournament and six had went past him. So yep. yeah. It's a, yeah. it's a hard pill to swallow, but... Russia's moving on. Nobody thought that we could do it. Heck, I didn't even know because I had on my Fox bracket that they were going to go out in the first round. But I'm glad I was wrong. So glad I was wrong. Yeah, Spain, honestly, I feel like uh, we don't have to worry about Real Madrid coming after De Gea anymore because he absolutely showed that, honestly, I don't know what's going on, but that Manchester United form is... Not there oh. for Spain. Just, yeah, it was, it was not there. United form stayed in Manchester. <laughs> yeah, it's it was it, that was awful. I just I I couldn't believe, and it was so dumb compared to what we saw in the other game, where how many there was at least two or three penalties that were stopped with somebody's foot, and De Gea mm-hmm. could have done that about three times. It's. I don't know whether it's just him not paying attention or him thinking him just being really tired. I don't know. Or being lazy. It just, at least somebody was crying. Unlike, you know, Ronaldo who was smiling and Messi who kind of just had this weird look on his face. Ramos actually cried when they lost, Um, you know, so good to see that passion from the players. Uh, I think considering where Ronaldo and Messi have been in World Cups and they haven't done well, that's really weird to see. But, you know, it's I think for Russia, all that matters is, like Rachel said, they got through. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what they wanted to do. Uh, Spain, again, like uh, Iniesta goes out in a bad way in, in this... <laughs> Boy, when I saw that news, I was, oh, if I wasn't. We knew he was going to retire. <laughs> yeah, we knew he was going to retire, but damn it, it didn't stop the urge for me wanting to jump up and down. Iniesta, you're finally free from me. Just when I thought I had the urge to want to punch you in the face again, I don't. It is gone for good. Celebrate that. <laughs> oh, it took me eight years to finally come to terms with this. Yeah, I, well, you know, Russia beats a giant, and now they have to keep uh, doing that. They get to go play Croatia in the next round as they defeated Denmark on penalties. And it probably shouldn't have gone to penalties, but Kastor Michael was able to put out a very weak shot from Luka Modric to keep things from going Croatia's way and deep into extra time, the second extra time. Uh, Kasperspeko had a terrific game anyway. It was mm-hmm. only uh, Subacic was able to best him in the penalty shootout with three saves compared to two. Uh, and, yeah. And even then, that was just barely. I mean, all the talk for Schmeichel, oh, his father is this, and his father's a legend this, and father's a legend that, and then cutting to him in the stands. To have that kind of a match and maintain this kind of a tournament under that much pressure, kudos to him. And I kind of feel bad that he's going out, but it was not his fault. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was weird because Denmark was, yeah, they scored first. Uh, Croatia mm-hmm. scored really quickly afterwards off two. It was really just two bad defensive plays yeah, on like both ends. Everybody just stood there. I'm like, hey, do you not know the match started? You know, the clock is actually going. It's like, really? <laughs> yeah, and then the man, the the hit Van Stukas finally gets comes off two Denmark defenders and it falls to him. It's like, all right, just uh, give him a goal there. But the rest of it was, honestly, Denmark got better as the game went on. Croatia looked like they were really tired. I don't know why. A lot of those players didn't play. A uh, Modric was the only one of the big big ones that played in the game uh, against Iceland and he had his moments just uh, I think it was just two very we talked about this two very well organized teams Eric that played like it they weren't going to let things through Um, both teams had some opportunities it was really more Croatia towards the end of extra time they really went after it and then the Honestly, I, like uh, Rachel said, and, and it was rather obvious. Like we've, this is not the first time we've seen this. It's it's much smarter to bring the guy down, mm-hmm. like uh, Rojo did against France, mm-hmm. and see what happens with the penalty because those aren't. It's like a free throw in basketball. They're not gimmies. No, they're not automatic by any means. That was a very well timed what they call a professional foul. I had no problem with that. (laughs) And it wasn't worth a red card either. And I'm glad Stuart Holden agrees with me. It was not worth a red card. He played for the ball. I think he touched the ball. So not worth a red. Yeah, I mean, that's a new rule anyway. So the referee interpreted it correctly. Yeah. (laughs) It's not a dog. So if you actually go after the ball, um, if you pull him down or any other kind of blatant way of you're trying to bring him down, then it's you're sending him off at that point. Yeah, so I was thinking to myself when I saw him, like, oh, this shouldn't that have been a red? And then we talked about it and I saw the tweets and I'm like, oh, okay. All right, I guess that makes sense. All right. I mean, it was so late that I don't know that it – and that also might have played into it as well. Like, it's so late in the game that the advantage that Croatia would have had is almost – no. Like, it's almost the end of the second extra time. What mm-hmm. you would have had at most five minutes. Uh, you would have prolonged the extra time for no reason, really, because you have the whole everybody's going to argue and you're going to have to go to VAR and, and all that other right. junk. Like, I, at the end of the day, I feel like it's, it's a, probably a better decision to not have Russia lose another player. Like they did in the uh, against in the Uruguay game. Yeah, so I'm like, because of that, I, I, I agree. And again, for the longest time, it paid off. And even going through penalties, Denmark still had a chance to win. So, in the end, things just worked out for the most part positive for them. And you don't have to worry about any suspensions because now you're done. And it didn't rain, so that's an extra bonus for you. Yeah, it's weird how Croatia got really lucky. They had, I think, like five people on yellow cards, and nobody got a yellow card in that game. So <laughs> They mentioned it, that. It's like, hey, wait a minute. Oh, um, we haven't seen a card in this match. Oh, Croatia. And they were talking about all the, the players on the, like yellow cards and all the, even for Denmark, all those cards that they had. So I was like, Hmm, interesting. Alrighty then. <laughs> I feel like that's been a story of the World Cup, honestly, is more of... It's not been a card-happy... The the games have been cleaner. It's not... Other than Panama, when they play, it's been much... And Korea and a few teams that decided that we're going to just foul. I think Iceland could have been put into that category too, but for the most part... We were talking about mostly clean games, and you've had, Mm -hmm. what, one straight red, and then a few other, you know, yellows turned into red, and that's about it. I mean, that's, it's got to be some kind of record. I think overall, the officiating hasn't been bad in the World Cup either. I mean, there were a couple games, but like, 
I really don't think it's been too bad. No. I mean, it helps when VAR is around to take no. away the big decisions yeah. and leave it in the that hand, that kind of hands. Yeah, I was just about to say, VAR has pretty much kept the officials in check in how they've rotated all the crews or doing it like they have. I think that this has been a very well-done, well-executed system, and certain countries that are considering getting rid of it or whatnot, they need to quit bitching and uh, see how it's done, because it can be done properly. Well, I think we got to remember this is the best of the best when it comes to referees, right? So you're look, you're taking, for the most part, the best referees from around the world, putting them in that position to make those help make those calls. And you've also got to, I think you've got to make it into one uniform thing. You can't have, I think Germany has it where VAR makes the final decision. And then Italy has it where it's the referee like MLS does. And mm-hmm. then you got to, it's all got to be one format. Like you've got to make yeah. the, everybody's got to say, okay, the referee on the field makes the final decision. Yeah, VAR cause, is just helping. Yeah, because it's better that way. You know, you yeah, tell. I mean, I feel like the NFL, they can have the whole, oh, New York makes that decision thing. I think it works for them because of the game being slower paced and it stops constantly. Soccer is just so free moving that well, that person that's on the field needs to make that decision. Well, even then, New York, they just buzz and say, hey, look at this. And then the referee. You know, NFL, arena football, they go, they see all of the available looks, and then they decide, once they've seen the looks, okay, this is what happened. So, Well, but the NFL changed it last year to where the referee basically just gives their advice, but New York decides at the end of the day. That's stupid. Yeah. That's stupid. So, I think that's the same way hockey does it, though, too. Uh, the the big office decides on the the major decisions. So yeah, I know they're on the phone with the offices in Toronto. Beyond that, I'm clueless. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like with soccer, it's different because mm-hmm. y- you have so much going on with that referee there. You know, you have the you know like at the end of the game with the Portugal game where Ronaldo gets right in the referee's face. And he's mad because the foul didn't get called on Quaresma at that point. And he rightfully gets a yellow because you shouldn't be getting in the guy's face. You know, imagine if VAR makes that decision and goes, oh, well, we didn't think it was a big deal. Reverse it or or something like that. It's like you got to give that guy that's having to deal with all that, doing all the running, uh, that power to understand that what he's doing there uh, has merit, you know. So... I think there has been calls that should have been made that didn't. Like the, uh, I think the one I keep going back to is because it was so blatant. The, uh, the Serbia penalty that wasn't called, where the guy just got absolutely bear hugged to the ground. Mm-hmm. But other than a few of those, I think VAR for the most part. Um, you know, it, I just I, my thing is that I'd rather I want some more consistency. But I guess every referee is going to see something different. So, oh, of course. You're going to have that human element. Uh, I mean, honestly, th- I don't think these were two of the greatest games ever that we had today. Um, they were very, you know, if Russia was going after it at first in the first half. I think we're surprising Spain a bit, and then they kind of bunkered in and we're letting Spain see if he can get through us. If you score, then we'll do what we got to do. But they didn't, and Russia got what they wanted. I think Denmark almost took advantage of Croatia players being kind of tired, and at times they couldn't find their feet. And if when they could, they couldn't get through the defense anyway. They had some mm-hmm. opportunities. Denmark had opportunities, but yeah, it just yeah. Um, for- Go ahead. For Spain and Russia, that was very tactically set up, which we had talked about. If Russia were to able to make anything, which they did, then it's like, okay, we know Spain is going to have a lot of possession. 
let them have a lot of possession, make things easier on us, and then maybe we can get something and get lucky on a counter. But for Croatia and Denmark, I think the fatigue came in because it was hot. It was humid. You don't see that right away, but when you get to the second half, 70th, 80th, 90th minute, then as it drags on, 95th, 100, 110th, that energy just saps out of you a lot faster. And they're not really used to playing in a lot of that kind of climate all the time, so you saw that effect on both teams. Rachel, anything else you want to say about uh, Russia on this? Don't ever count us out again. (laughs) Croatia's going to be a tough match, but I'm not going to be overconfident, but I think Russia has a really good fighting chance. And even if they don't, nobody thought they had a fighting chance against Spain. Yet, PK is going goodbye on his plane, and my hatred for PK worked. (laughs) Go, Russia. Uh, yes. Russia has not gone this deep in the World Cup since 1970. When we were the Soviet Union. Yes. And now that you've knocked out the most recent champions, Switzerland, their only appearance in a final, 58. England, their only appearance in a final, 66, where they won it on home soil. That's it. Nobody else on the right side of the bracket has even been to a final. I think the closest ones are Croatia to where they lost to France in 98 in the semifinals, which had they gotten past that match, they would have been champions and not Le Bleu. So everything is all of a sudden wide open. Bring on the challenge. Yeah, I feel like Croatia presents a different kind of issue in that their possession isn't just trying to pass everywhere. They actually, you know, shoot from outside if they have to. They make that pass inside. They have Mandzukic that can be a target person. Uh, Costa is supposed to be that, but they weren't doing that here in this this game Oh, he was terrible. Yeah. I mean, they didn't make him the central focus. I felt like Costa was just there, almost, uh, d- almost in- invisible at times. And I feel like Croatia, and also I feel like Croatia understands they got away with the one here. I don't think they can do that with having the home fans behind Russia and everything in the next one. They're going to have to be switched on. All hail Igor Akinfeev's leg. <laughs> yeah. That was a, a amazing day for leg saves in this World Cup. You don't see those that often. You saw quite a few of them. Bro, and, uh, goalies. Hey, goalies respect leg day too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they have to. It's their last line of defense when their hands can't do the work. Uh, congrats to Akifab and Sue Bossic for their heroics and penalty shootouts. And now we got big game for CONCACAF tomorrow. Mexico and Brazil. No Marcelo. No Danilo. Now, uh, even though no Marcelo, uh, I, I've heard reports that he was sneaking around and they were blaming a bad mattress for his back spasms and that he was training. So um, I'm leaving that as a question mark. And Chicharito has bleach blonde hair. What? No. no. That's weird. No. Oh, I'll send you the picture. Oh, yeah. Why? I don't know. Fox Soccer had a tweet, like a video about him and a couple other teammates bleached hair. Oh, I'll have to show you guys. It's hilarious. Who the hell is that? be a superstition <laughs> thing? Like, why opinion. wouldn't you change your hair? <laughs> Sorry, Eric, what'd you say? Who the hell do they think they are? The Saudi Arabian Little League team? Jesus Christ, that's a red card just on principle. (laughs) Oh, 
dear lord! <laughs> you lost me until you said red card on principle, so you won. Okay. With that. For, for those of you that follow the Little League World Series. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. Back in the day, there was a very, like, dominant team of expats whose parents worked in, like, oil fields and stuff in Saudi Arabia and parts of the Middle East. So naturally, they had great Little League players, so they would always qualify and get to Williamsport, Pennsylvania for the championship out of that region. Their longstanding ritual every single year was that every player on the team dyed their hair bleach blonde. For a Little League team, for that level of camaraderie, especially your parents are burning their entire vacation just for this tournament, I get it. Chicharito, damn it, you're a grown-ass man. Stop it. No. 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 They, they wanted to feel like Neymar. That's all that was. With his spaghetti oh, hair. Think that was a delicious plate of pasta on his head. <laughs> or uh, oh. Gareth Bale doing the impression of the commercial. It's... <laughs> so I like that commercial. I like the one with the Buffon and uh, Howard as well. That's... Yeah, why did why did they wait this long to break out those commercials too? Volkswagen <laughs> still has the best commercial, especially with the girl from Iceland who says they don't have enough people to do the wave. Yeah, yeah, that was I hate cool, that they take the, out the part where she's like, "Put your hands down, Sven." That's the best. Well, part. the reason why, if you look at that, that's just for Iceland themselves. When yeah. that's the central point of that commercial, if you look at the one to where it's with the Belgian dude. Which, by oh. the way, that's my personal favorite. Either they had to trim something. <laughs> oh, the, the Argentina one's funny, too. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, we got so much passion. How many times did I tell you? I told you 20,000 times. I was like, what's your problem with the lights, dude? I like the Atlanta Donovan commercial, too. I know a lot of people hate it, but. The one where he's uh, in the Mexico shirt? or the Yeah, uh... the one in the yeah. Mexico shirt. And then Marco Fabian's like, oh, that's it's, a... it's Fabian. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is that Marco like... Fabian? It's Fabian. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Fabian Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that one's Fabian Johnson, right? Because no, it's Fabian. Oh, Fabian. Okay. Mm-hmm. It pisses me off whenever I'm watching his Bundesliga matches and all I hear is Fabian, Fabian. And then Jurgen always used to call him Fabian. <laughs> uh, I feel like that was more of a tomato, tomato thing. Like Fabian is just because that's the Spanish way of saying it. Mm-hmm. So. I... Especially when you had the woman be like on an entire crusade to have them put the proper accent marks for their names on the back of their jerseys. Uh, <laughs> that's important. It is very important. I saw. Sub- when I heard about it, I'm like, hey, I completely support it. But I'm like, yeah, they take this very seriously. <laughs> as as they should. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, well, go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say that, well, Russia advancing, by the way, gives me and um, Eric more time to get Fader Small of to call me. Yeah, uh, I've been looking at that. I need to find a way to where... Uh, they can get translations a little bit more Romanized because I keep seeing these letters in the Cyrillic alphabet, and I'm like, I don't know those letters. Yeah. How do you pronounce those letters? You don't need numbers. I just have my phone number for him. <laughs> well, you know what to do, Fader. You need to yeah, call so, her. So if anybody can hook me up with a good translation service for that, uh at Squid Sports Head, tweet me because uh, I got to make a plea here because I have some ideas. Maybe we'll just have the whole conversation on the podcast. She <laughs> called. He called her. The podcast. Oh, you wouldn't the... want that on public air. <laughs> just saying. It'd be too vulgar for your know? ears. <laughs> Remember how we kept having those ideas? Well, for Eric like- might want it on public air. I don't know. I, look, if we're not going to do it as an after dark show, I could make it a special edition of Point of Viewer. I would just sit back. I chime in only when necessary. Bish, bash, bosh. <laughs> Eric would be. It would be like the episode of the Hotline with Eric. It's- 
See? See? You already... See? Rachel, we've got to make this a thing. There, there's some ideas brewing here. It will be a thing if Fader calls me. Fader! <laughs> well, getting back at what's, what we got, previewing the games of tomorrow, <laughs> sadly do not involve Fader Swallow. Uh, so, hey, look, I think Mexico has a really good chance here because this plays into what Mexico does well in that they counterattack. Brazil is going to be possessing the ball, going after them. Uh, this won't be like the Sweden game where Sweden's sitting back wanting Mexico to come at them. That's where they don't do well. They need much better at counterattacking. I feel like uh, this is a game Brazil's going to have to watch out for. But at the same time, they have experience with each other. Uh, Neymar's not ailing from his foot and and all that like he was in the previous World Cup. Coutinho's playing much better. Ooh, the, I hope this is like one of those, like, another one of these 4-3 to three where it actually feels like it should be 4-3, to three, not like the Argentina one where it should have been like 4-1. But, you know, let, let's just hope it's a really good game. I, I'm hoping so too, plus... I mean, with the fact that there's only been the, what, one nil-nil match so far, I still want to see if this is a tournament that can finally break the record for most goals all time. It's a tough task, but I think there's enough matches to where if we get a couple more high-scoring ones, it's doable. To summarize tomorrow's match between Mexico and Brazil... All I can say is there was a tweet that summed it up perfectly. Germany, Spain, Argentina, Portugal, out. Right now, Brazil, a little bit of nervous laughter. A little bit of nervous laughter, but I feel like Brazil's in a different position than all these teams were. They actually played well in their group. And... You know, they're really reeling from that revenge from last year. I think the other teams didn't have You know, Germany had the World Cup win hangover. Spain had the problem where they changed coaches before the whole World Cup started. And they didn't look always the best. And Portugal, same thing. Once they got past the Spain game, they started looking more like Portugal. And they're still relying on Ronaldo. And Argentina was a total mess. So... It, that one's going to be, and what Mexico are we going to get again? Because they played well for the first two games, and then Sweden demolished them. So, you know, could Brazil do the same thing? Would be, is that bleach blonde hair going to be too much what, what Chicharito is thinking about after he's told he got goal number 50? Stupid, <sighs> stupid, stupid. <laughs> And I'm I'm hoping I'm so hoping Japan can pull a Russia and upset Belgium. I want it to happen. Come no on, Blue Samurai. No, no, yes. no, no. The Samurai Blue have done their job. Do not deny me another helping of waffles, Sean. <laughs> we need to. Belgium keep, need to keep you know not living up to their golden generation. No, no, let them finally do it for once. That way I can go to the dance festival wearing a Lukaku jersey and say, hey, I had faith in you. (laughs) Bring me your finest equipment and women and whatever substances you partake of here. I judge thee not. (laughs) You're going to have your own lighting guy, too. Exactly. Maybe two of them. You know, one to get my good side and one to get the other side, you know? Wouldn't that just be having a lighting guy so he gets your whole face? I don't know. Come on, Sean, Sean. Lighting at EDM festivals is very particular here, okay? You got to be at the right moment, at the right place. You have to have the right colors when the right vibes kick in off of the right stuff. Otherwise, it's going to be a terrible experience. Try not to have epilepsy with all the strobe lights that too Eh, that's a secondary problem we'll cross that bridge in case it happens oh no but honestly that's it's gonna be a tough one belgium's got if if hazard and lukaku are back healthy that's a lot to go against japan as organized as they are i feel like belgium will be just too good and break them down eventually but 
I'm still holding out hope. Anything oh. on that, Rachel? You know I live for my upsets. <laughs> It'd be fun. I gotta see that uh, joy in Tokyo again. Croatia oh, looked like they were just having a blast. Like, well, of that, course. A freaking it... rave was going on. Yeah, you see what I mean? Imagine that scene in Belgium. Come on now. Tokyo, you're, you're gonna get the Olympics. You've got the Olympics in two years. Be happy. They're gonna... <laughs> They're going to sit there and they, their party's going to be inside the club and everybody's, everybody's going to be rocking already. I want to see that happen now. We've got to, Belgium, we got to make it happen. But we'll see. Two really interesting games. The Mexico Brazil one is early at 10 a.m. So if you're one of those that kind of at work, get ready because I know everybody's going to have their phone on. I don't know if Jorge Perez Navarro is going to be telling you it's soccer time or not. but I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> He's fun. I know his, some people really, really hate him. but Oh, I love him. He's so much fun. And the other guy that he talks with, too, I like their little duo that they got. Yeah, Mariano Trujillo. He was in the studio last in the Confed Cup, and they put him into the booth this time. So Oh, they're so fun. I love them. Yeah, this is the perfect little combination, especially with their banter and talking about how old they are with each other. It's making it, – it works. It's funny. I will say, though, that they're my second favorite behind Sue and uh, John Strong. Hmm. Allie, yeah. and JP, Allie and JP should be together, too. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't do the Allie and JP – but I think they wanted to put Allie with a very experienced guy like Derek Ray to help her out. And she's done pretty well. She did great. Oh, she's awesome. Well, I think uh, that's going to do it for us here on uh, this World Cup edition. Two big games to talk about tomorrow. With Brazil, Mexico. Can CONCACAF, can Mexico make it to the quinto partido? De los sueños that they have been hoping and dreaming about for since 1994. Will this be the one or will Brazil go on and hope to get vengeance, uh, even though they won't be able to get it on Germany, perhaps on on France instead? And uh, could Japan pull the upset or will Belgium finally make it possibly past the quarterfinals? We'll see wall how that, that goes. Wall fools. Wall fools. Wall fools. <laughs> yeah, it would be interesting to get Mexico, Belgium. Mexico did draw with them, I think. So, hmm. We could see it. We could see it. Yeah, that, that, that would be quirky. I mean, as is. I still say I'm a little bit pissed at England for screwing up because now my potential final is a quarterfinal. Oh, damn you three lions. <laughs> That's a tough one because I wanted Colombia to go far, but like I also wanted England to surprise. But I also didn't expect like that whole side of the bracket's going to be a Euro, basically. So, yeah. But... Well, until uh, next time. See you later, everybody. Call me, Fader.